Relationships can often be complicated. Typically, couples bond over their shared interests, whether that be a love for traveling or helping those in need. For Kawhi Leonard and the San Antonio Spurs, they fostered their connection on the court. Throughout their partnership, both Kawhi and the Spurs experienced a ton of success and proved San Antonio wasn't going anywhere. For six years, the introverted superstar and the Spurs seemed inseparable until a mysterious quadriceps injury limited Kawhi's play, ultimately stripping the true essence of what held their relationship together, hooping. With Kawhi unable to perform, the usual story of greatness that surrounded the league's model franchise turned into a bizarre saga where a once strong connection collapsed, and in its place, beef that shifted the entire landscape of the NBA. During the 2017-18 season, Kawhi's quad became a major topic of discussion and for good reason. After falling short to the Warriors in the 2017 Conference Finals, the Spurs looked to take another shot at the chip. Except, it's a little tougher to do that when your premier player starts the season rehabbing a newly revealed injury. The details of the injury were sparse, and as usual, on the extremely rare occasion Kawhi spoke, he didn't really say much. I mean, soon is not a medical time frame. After missing 27 games, Kawhi finally suited up in December 2017. While things initially looked tense between Kawhi and head coach Greg Popovich, the two were spotted sharing a laugh calming any worries. As small as it is, the fact that Kawhi admitted to having some good old ha-has with his coach was evidence the relationship was fine. For the guy who literally branded his lack of emotions, simple laughter was truly noteworthy. Kawhi might have felt some type of way about playing limited minutes, but he understood his mission, and more than anything, the dude was hyped to finally be able to play again. His squad was thrilled too. As a teammate, how couldn't you be amped with bringing back a player that was fire at all aspects of the game? The Spurs had learned to operate in Kawhi's absence, but with him back on the floor, journalists believed the team could level up their play, ready to knock out the league's best. Except, San Antonio never got to experience their full potential. After playing just nine games, Kawhi was shut down in January 2018. Reports at the time detailed Kawhi's quad rehab, which created problems within the team. Leonard and his camp supposedly ghosted the Spurs. San Antonio general manager R.C. Buford called bullshit, saying all parties were locked in together but didn't hide his feelings, hammering how difficult the whole ordeal had been. Just for extra reassurance everything was cool, Buford flaunted Tony Parker's recovery from a similar injury like a proud father. No shade at all. Kawhi, well, Kawhi's camp rather, fully agreed with Buford denying there was any tension. Sure, both sides squashed talks of beef, but it's important to note that during the 2017-18 season, the voices surrounding Kawhi started to pipe up. And often, the voice belonged to Kawhi's uncle, Dennis Robertson. When Kawhi hit the NBA, he kept a tight circle of people he trusted, including his uncle Dennis, who he built a special connection with through unfortunate circumstances. As a teenager, Kawhi's dad was shot and killed at a car wash he owned, leaving Robertson to fill the father figure role in Kawhi's life. Kawhi always felt comfortable turning to his uncle for advice and depended on his knowledge appointing Dennis as his chief business strategist. Although Uncle Denny made his first beef appearance speaking on behalf of his nephew in January 2018, the man was cooking up trouble behind the scenes long before. In August 2017, a month before the Spurs officially revealed Kawhi's injury, reporter Michael C. Wright uncovered that San Antonio fully handed over control of Kawhi's rehab to his people, namely Robertson and agent Mitch Frankel. Kawhi's uncle calling the shot seemed harmless, but San Antonio was shook by the idea that Robertson purposely tried to ruin Kawhi's relationship with the team to land him elsewhere. Maybe watching your franchise star take medical advice from a doctor affiliated with the Philadelphia 76ers would for sure be reason for concern. Many people viewed Uncle Dennis as a finesser, leveraging Kawhi's success for his own get-rich-quick scheme, which Robertson of course denied. Anyways, with full control of the situation, Leonard freely sought outside opinions and spent weeks away from the team rehabbing in New York. 
San Antonio sent staffers to keep a watchful eye, but Kawhi's people in the Spurs really didn't chop it up much. Wright recalled on the Back to Back podcast an instance where Kawhi's camp moved him to an entirely different part of the building when San Antonio's brass came to check Kawhi's status. Some of the Spurs brass went out to see him in New York. As soon as those guys arrived to the building, Kawhi's people grabbed him and sequestered him to another part of the building so the Spurs people couldn't even see him. I'm all for a classic game of hide and seek, but if you have to go through all that, there is clearly a problem. While those shenanigans weren't revealed till after the season, during the 2018 All-Star break in February, Popovich shut down any optimism of Kawhi returning for the year. Pop wanted to keep it real about bringing Kawhi back, but his statement was somewhat surprising considering it was almost simultaneously reported that Kawhi had been medically cleared by the team and the ball was in his court. Kawhi didn't join the active roster, but returned to San Antonio later that month with hopes of returning by late March. Back under the team's roof, Kawhi cleared the air, speaking to the media publicly for the first time in months. Leonard downplayed any friction, saying how could there be any beef with the Spurs when he talked to his coach every day? Kawhi couldn't exactly describe his quad pain, but expressed he would have definitely been on the court if he could. More importantly, when questioned if he would like to finish his career as a Spur, Kawhi confidently responded, Yeah, for sure. Don't let the whispered monotone fool you. That's just how Kawhi spoke. As rumors flooded that Kawhi wanted out of San Antonio, finally hearing from him directly was a gigantic leap in easing the minds of Spurs fans. Bringing a healthy Leonard back would have absolutely given San Antonio the best odds at keeping their two decades long playoff streak alive. But it had to be awkward between Kawhi and his teammates when he constantly teased his return. Certainly awkward enough for the team to press him, holding a players-only meeting less than two weeks after Kawhi spoke to the media. Emotions reportedly ran high, with several teammates expressing their concern over Kawhi's dedication to the team. Leonard supposedly stood his ground, saying he had good reason to rest. Kawhi lit practice up, showing signs he was ready for a return, but members of the Spurs weren't having it. Manu Ginobili told reporters bluntly the team needed to move on without Kawhi because his pump fakes weren't helping. If Kawhi really wanted to be a part of the squad, Manu thought he needed to act like it. If Ginobili's remarks offered a peek at the severity of the situation, Parker kicked the door down with his thoughts about Kawhi days later. Parker suffered a ruptured left quadriceps tendon in the previous season, but has since returned to the team in late 2017, and was bewildered why Leonard wasn't playing, especially since he thought his injury was 100 times worse than Kawhi's. Parker then went on to sing the praises of the San Antonio staff, calling them the best medical team in the world. Sandwiched in between Parker and Ginobili's comments, Kawhi finally let his real thoughts fly. Four days after the reported players only meeting, Kawhi was asked if his health was the real reason he wasn't playing and responded with a polite version of what the fuck else would it be? Kawhi wasn't done and fully unloaded the clip mentioning how everyone tried to put a spin on the situation and that people were ready to eat up anything coming from San Antonio's side. But before Kawhi was fully able to eat through the Spurs, a San Antonio staffer swiftly ended the convo. Between the typically reserved Kawhi, now all of a sudden popping off at the mouth, and veteran teammates dissing them, the situation in San Antonio took a drastic turn. The question was no longer if Kawhi would play that season, but whether he'd be spotted in a Spurs uniform again, period. As the end of the regular season neared, Kawhi went back to New York for rehab, leaving Pop and the Spurs staff completely in the dark. Without Kawhi, the Spurs snuck into the playoffs, snatching the seventh seed to set up a matchup with Golden State. But unfortunately for San Antonio, Kawhi continued his rehab while his teammates got smoked in five games. Not that a hobbled Leonard would have slowed down the eventual champions, but his absence from even showing love from the bench wasn't the best look. Since Kawhi no-showed the entire series, Pop was left to fill in the blanks, and the man didn't mince his words. After a game one loss, Pop was asked about the possibility of Kawhi appearing in the playoffs and immediately shot back saying there was a question for his group. Pop's continued vagueness on Kawhi's status made it even more apparent that he was truly just as clueless as the reporters questioning him. And if you couldn't tell Pop was growing more frustrated by the day, 
a direct shot at Kawhi cleared up any confusion. After dropping 34 points in game two, Pop made a point to shout out LaMarcus Aldridge for being a dependable teammate who happily put in the work without complaints. When it comes to beef, that ain't even a sneak This It's a straight jab and Pop really didn't deny it. Nonetheless, Kawhi's future with the Spurs became even more of a hot topic in the offseason, fueled by an ESPN report airing out all grievances from both sides. Among the mess field report, revelations found that disagreements over Kawhi's exact diagnosis popped off this long, puzzling saga, and it wasn't necessarily a new issue. Years earlier, Kawhi struggled with a wrist injury, and his reps at the time, agents Mitch Frankel and Brian Elfis, pushed for a second opinion, which San Antonio eventually caved on and allowed. Elfis was Kawhi's agent from the jump and kept a strong relationship with the move makers in San Antonio. But after he dipped in 2016, Uncle Dennis and Frankel took over, causing a shift in the relationship so severe, Buford became restless, potentially watching his homegrown star slip through their hands. Not to bore you with medical jargon, but in this instance, Kawhi's can't believe this injury resulted from multiple bruises dating back to 2016, causing the muscles to harden. The Spurs, on the other hand, had always labeled it a tendon problem. And since both required unique treatment, this agreement spiraled into beef. While it was important that their superstar felt comfortable, the franchise grew tired of Kawhi's camp being the ultimate decision makers, leaving the team powerless waiting for the next move. The Spurs were stuck in their ways, reluctant to adjust, and Kawhi wasn't really feeling it. For years, the Spurs saw Kawhi as the ideal successor to Tim Duncan, both in his hunger for greatness and nonchalant personality. And for a period of time, San Antonio believed that could still be a reality. As the 2018 NBA draft neared, Kawhi and Pop were reportedly expected to link up and solve their problems. Although for Popovich, everything was small in comparison to his life outside of basketball. Pop was mourning the recent passing of his wife Erin, and the scheduled meeting with Kawhi was just three weeks removed from her funeral. Kawhi attended Erin's service to show support of his coach, proving their relationship wasn't completely broken. The idea that the two were ready to officially sit down with each other was a step in the right direction and their timing couldn't be more essential. With the 2018 draft coming, Kawhi's contract looming, and rival teams drooling at the thought of his availability, the clock was ticking. San Antonio reportedly wanted to throw a bag at Kawhi, but obviously not before making sure everything was Gucci from all sides. The Spurs didn't give a damn about trade offers and were ready to roll the dice with their embattled star next season if it came to. So this meeting between Kawhi and Pop was crucial. Fans hoped Pop could work his magic just like he did to help convince Duncan to stay in 2000, except Kawhi purposely kept ducking Pop and the Spurs. It seemed like an out of character move, but by then, Leonard was fed up with the mishandling of his injury and how the franchise switched on him. Kawhi wasn't fond of the public comments throwing salt on his name, especially Parker's 100 times worse dig. Although Kawhi hadn't directly requested a trade from the Spurs just yet, in the eyes of these unnamed sources, it appeared no amount of money would cover the Spurs' betrayal. Throughout the Popovich era, despite San Antonio being a small market and arguably the NBA's most vanilla team, the franchise took great pride in its player relations. After nearly two weeks, Pop eventually did meet with Kawhi in hopes of a last ditch effort that Leonard would have a change of heart, but the relationship seemed beyond repair. The franchise accepted it was time to move on. No prominent spur before Leonard forced his way out in such a way, but the franchise that sustained success for so long started to watch the league evolve in front of their eyes. If Kawhi felt the Spurs were stubborn in their ways, it was his prerogative to protect this health. I'll be damned if I let someone make money off my back if I'm not 100%. While the end of a prosperous era toppled in a matter of months, resulting in a blockbuster trade, it pointed to the new reality of the NBA, leaving the Spurs in the dust. Kawhi reportedly preferred to land in LA, and while that didn't happen immediately, he got his wish the very next year, but it didn't come without slimy business moves. Throughout facilitating deals for his kinfolk, the NBA launched an investigation against Uncle Dennis for violating rules where Robertson reportedly tried getting outrageous benefits all to himself. 
The league investigation gave legitimacy to San Antonio's claim that Dennis had ulterior motives all along. But they spoke to Robertson's brash negotiation skills that he would ask for part ownership in a private plane on command. You never know until you ask. It's hard sending off a player you watch develop in front of your eyes, but Pop understood it was time to close their chapter together. Leonard eventually released a statement, and not saying that his feelings towards San Antonio were fake, but it's hard to believe it took several weeks to put THANK YOU in all caps to drive home how appreciative he was. While Kawhi's infamous laugh stole the show at his introductory press conference in Toronto, he didn't have any bad blood with the Spurs and instead wanted to focus on his new journey. The 2018-19 season presented a fresh opportunity for both Kawhi and the Spurs, but getting over your ex can be difficult. In November 2018, Pop was asked about Patty Mills filling the leadership void left by Leonard, and Pop responded coldly, saying Kawhi was never a leader. When word got back to Leonard, Kawhi thought his former head coach's comments were funny. Not funny like a clown, but more in the sense that people started acting up when he wasn't around. Throughout the perplexing events that led to their eventual fallout, besides Kawhi calling out things he thought were funny that clearly weren't, he rarely expressed his true feelings and allowed his camp to steer the narrative. When he responded directly to Pop, it showed Kawhi was hurt by the person he once shared a special bond with. And a few months later, the two had to settle their differences on the floor in a highly anticipated showdown. Kawhi's return to San Antonio became the ideal moment for Spurs fans to become Hall of Fame haters, booing Leonard whenever possible. The wrath aimed at Kawhi reached its boiling point midway through the second quarter when the packed out crowd serenaded Leonard with the chance of <laughs> watching 18,000 pissed off fans come together and execute a spiteful chant in unison showed how the San Antonio faithful were accustomed to nothing but strict loyalty from their stars. Spurs fans were victorious in watching their home team thrash the Raptors as Kawhi put on an average performance by his standards. But despite the boos from the crowd, Pop and Kawhi shared a warm embrace following the game. And it wasn't your typical dap followed by a quick hug. The two held on to each other, both flashing smiles, showing that maybe everything was good. Pop struggled to diminish the importance of the reunion before the game, but felt awful about the fan reactions towards Kawhi, saying he deserved better. Kawhi didn't seem bothered, and rather thrived in the moment, insisting that it would only make him better. Leonard was of course forced to acknowledge the root of his shocking departure, but kept it short and sweet, saying he probably wouldn't speak on it until after retirement. Watching Kawhi and Pop hug at midcourt inspired hope that maybe over time their relationship could properly heal. But this beef was never about Kawhi and Pop. It involved the entire Spurs organization and Kawhi's group bickering through back channels leading to a ridiculous drama-filled season where Kawhi felt he had no other choice but to leave San Antonio. When the Raptors and the Spurs faced off again in the 2018-19 season, Kawhi kept the same attitude that nothing was special about playing against his old team just another game. It seemed like Kawhi would never truly provide the answers that everyone desperately craved. But of course, Uncle Dennis was always there to pick up the pieces. In a May 2019 interview, Robertson detailed to Yahoo Sports that Kawhi lost his faith in the Spurs and the relationship couldn't be recovered once their trust was broken. Robertson believed the Spurs were looking out for themselves by rushing Kawhi back to the court instead of allowing him the time he needed. For Kawhi, he focused more on proving his doubters wrong, capturing Toronto's first title in franchise history while earning finals MVP in the process. Kawhi's glorious year in Toronto proved to be a big successful bet on himself, but yet, years removed from the Spurs and playing for an entirely different org, San Antonio fans still rained down booze on Leonard whenever he came into town. Kawhi never took it personally and understood that fans will ride for their team no matter what. But outside of the court, Kawhi still felt depreciated by the people of San Antonio. As Kawhi tried to move forward, Spurs fans had no hesitation in reverting back to their hating ass ways whenever presented with an opportunity. That's sports fandom for you, baby. As for Kawhi and Pop, 
Over the years, the two continued showing love to each other after games, and although he ultimately didn't play because of injury, Kawhi planned on joining the Tokyo Olympics, coached by Pop, indicating their relationship was healing. In most situations, there's three sides to every story. Your side, the other person's side, and the truth of what actually happened. But as Kawhi chose his spots, before fully closing the door shut on expressing his true feelings, this feud went far beyond that concept, which left us constantly grasping on to the absurd pieces surrounding one of the most unique beeves in NBA history. Yo, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this and find yourself itching for more Kawhi beef, check out part one of this series if you haven't already. Or if you like some good old mess, we have plenty of more beef episodes. Don't forget to like and subscribe because best believe we're coming with more heat. I'm out of here. Peace.